everyone, it's Ross, and today I want to talk a little bit about bed preparation for growing vegetables uh, specifically. What we have right here is a raised bed that I created years ago, uh, at least three or four years ago. And you can go back and look at the videos that I did to create this and kind of the updates. I've changed around this bed so, so many times I cannot count. Um, when I first originally built this bed, I I thought I didn't you know I didn't really know a whole lot about soil, and I thought it'd be a great idea to put a raised bed in here to kind of add in my own soil uh, to kind of replicate a container, and that way I could put trees in here and other perennials, and I could grow perennials in these raised beds, and they'd be happily happily ever after. But uh, that's not the case because a couple things happened. One, the soil in this bed really sucks. Uh, the soil I had chose is mostly peat moss. It was cheap. This is a really long, high bed. It's uh, it's a foot off the ground, uh, I believe. At least at least a foot off the ground. You know, and it's like 20 feet long. This is a situation where you <laughs> you basically uh, gotta gotta put some kind of soil in here for cheap, right? Because the amount of cubic feet or cubic yards of of, uh, of soil is just nuts. And the cheapest thing I could find was peat moss. That was uh, really the most affordable thing. It's kind of like in this size bag, kind of like similar to the rice holes here. It's seven cubic feet, cubic yards, I believe it is. I have to go look. But to put something like my my potting mix, you know, my soil conditioner that I use for all of my trees, it was just, it's just too much money. So I kind of did this improperly to begin with. Um, filled it in with, with just sterile soil. Peat moss is sterile. Uh, there's no nutrients in it. It also is hydrophobic when it, when it's dry. And because this bed is a foot off the ground, it's very easy for this bed to get dry. Um, not to mention there's also a shade tree here numerous shade trees that have actually roots into the bottom of this bed and i decided that you know i can't grow fruit trees in here obviously for for numerous reasons um i guess i could which we're actually gonna we're gonna circle back to in just a second but this is really just the most improper way i think to create a bed for for anything whether it's uh fruit trees or or vegetables um, I want to show you guys a new bed that I've created and we're going to come back to that bed because there's more I want to explain but I want to show you guys this other bed that we just created for my um, my girlfriend. She's going to be doing some gardening this year with me and trying to learn more uh, more about gardening. You know she has a lot of uh, pretty, pretty decent amount of experience in it now but we need to make sure that um, for her future that she can do this so she wants to get really good at it and she lives in the city and she doesn't have any land so this bed we created and again it's sort of a raised bed because of the wooden feature here but you don't need that and this was only here I only moved this wooden portion out out of this section here to use this as a frame and I want to do it's very important and you know, there's many different ways to do this to create a garden bed as you know tilling kind of breaking up the soil you know adding in amendments uh, of different things you may need in your soil adding organic matter and then kind of tilling that all in and making it all loose well for me I don't I don't find that to be very uh, as effective for long-term um, growth and uh, progression I think um, doing the no dig approach which is a a method that a lot of uh, market gardeners use in England um, and I think it's becoming more and more prevalent now is I literally will just take bags of compost which is pretty much my soil conditioner here it's 50% compost 50% pine bark and I will just throw that down on the soil and make a bed out of it um, before we did that however we put down lots of straw you can see this little area here a walkway we put down straw to kill the grass and then on top of the straw we put down cardboard. The cardboard and the straw will both break down quite quickly actually in 
you know, by next year when the um, when the spring comes, all that cardboard we put in here and all that straw will be completely broken down because there's worms that will be attracted to this stuff and they love it. So we're really adding a lot of uh, material and then we just throw in the compost which is the really nice growing material. It really is. It's very, um, I have no problem germinating anything in these beds here. You know, it's exactly what I did in this bed. We did it, you know, years ago with this one. And every year I keep adding compost. You can see here's some new compost that we added in very recently. And it's just, a, you know, a process of just in no dig, you just keep adding compost over time. Um, really, realistically, you want it about four to six inches high. Um, and then every year you just add a compost. Pretty simple. Pretty simple, right? I mean, this isn't really rocket science. This doesn't take a whole lot of uh, effort in this small of a scale. You know, just throw down the compost uh, and you can germinate into this super well. It holds moisture very well. It also has lots of nutrients. And then the greatest part about this is that because my soil here in this location actually is pretty decent. I mean, it's heavy. It doesn't drain all that well, but it has a lot of nutrients. So I just need something I can really germinate well in in this location and then that's it right something that's you know going to hold some water and then from there most of these plants that i put in here whether they're transplants or direct seeded their roots will eventually go into the the native soil here you know they won't stay in this raised bed right there's no bottom there's no bottom to this thing they'll eventually creep out and then they'll get an even better kick of energy um which really supercharges, supercharges these plants. So this is, uh, of course, one way to do it, of many ways to do it, but that's, in my mind, the best way to do it. Um, I guess really the best isn't really a great word to use, but maybe my favorite, because it's the least amount of work and it seems to have um, a lot of reward. Um, I'll also go back to this bed here, because I want to show you guys what we're going to do with this now because we've we went from years ago to growing six trees in here we had six trees spaced out persimmons mulberries uh plums we had a uh, a pear tree in here and then we also had some shrubs things like currants gooseberries and honeyberries on this side of the bed uh, because that's where the sunlight would hit them the most rather than on this side you know um and then we're, I was like, well, that's not going to work because, you know, obviously one, the soil sucks. Two, it it doesn't um, doesn't hold water very well. We need to actually water this bed. Um, three, the other uh, negative was that some of these trees were waking up too early. Um, things like persimmons, jujubes, and figs, they wake up actually quite late, which is kind of weird, right? Because they're they're subtropical species. Whereas my temperate fruits, like the mulberry, you know, um, well, I guess the mulberry is more subtropical, but, you know, things like, um, pe you know, my pear tree and my plum trees and really any of my more temperate trees or temperate fruit trees would wake up too early because of that excess heat that they're getting. And the reason they're getting it is because this raised bed has access to more heat, has access to more sunlight. So the soil in this bed is actually warmer and also colder at the same time. Um, at you know, the very lows of the winter time, this should be colder, but in the highs of the summer, this will be warmer. So it warms up quicker, but it also cools down quicker. So essentially, um, it wasn't really a good idea. I had mulberry trees waking up before you know, it was uh, the last frost, you know, and then that way they would wake up in like February and my last frost is like May 1st on average. And then they would have like two months of me praying and crossing my fingers that these things wouldn't get hit with a frost when it's very obvious that they would. So the only thing I can really put in here, if it was a tree, is either a fig, a persimmon or a jujube. Okay, it doesn't seem worth it for anything else. Uh, because the only other alternative to that, which is what I had done the last couple years, the last two years, this year was a huge failure. Last year, we kind of were hinting at it and trying it our best with it. But this year, I gave it a really serious try. And on the second year, which was 
this year we had a huge failure. This was the bed that we put in all of the vertical EMT posts to try to grow all these uh, melons and, and uh, tomatoes and eggplants and cucumbers and all that stuff vertically. And I realized that yes, they could do it, but it takes a while for them to get through all of this horrible material. Yeah, we did uh, we did improve this soil. We added in lots of compost. We added in many, many amendments. I've added so many amendments to this bed over the years. It just didn't seem to matter because the bottom three fourths or the bottom half is completely peat moss that is sterile. It's really tough to get through because this the shade trees guys have all their roots entangled with this. What I had done just now before I turned on the camera was I decided to dig around in here and see if I could amend the soil to a point where I could probably grow annual vegetables in here. And I think the short answer is no. I mean, I, I really did some digging with the shovel here. Um, I don't know why I covered it back up, but you know, it really didn't look too great. It's, it's not something that you could really grow all that well in. Um, I think the real objective of anything that's going to be in this bed, because I, I can't really dispose of this material. You know, I can't just lift up this box, this wooden raised bed and spread the soil out along the ground and then that way I could kind of replicate what we've done on the other side of the house. You know, that that would be a nice option, but this isn't my property and I can't really mo adjust this in any way. So this is kind of what we're stuck with. And I think the best solution to this would then be to actually put things like figs or persimmons or jujubes in here that don't necessarily wake up so early um, and then put them in here uh, and put them in here deep. Maybe actually take out some of the soil as much as I can, if I could take any out at all. And then that way their, their root systems can actually get established into the native soil somewhat quickly. And at least with a fig tree, it could be a benefit, right? Because these are in raised beds. It's kind of like growing them in a container. They're being replicated that way they have access to more heat, higher metabolisms. It could work out. And I have a, a fig tree over here in a raised bed. Um, this is where the, the blackberries and the raspberries are. And I decided, you know what, let's just throw a fig tree in here as an experiment because I really want to try to get these figs to kind of replicate containers as much as possible. And there's no better way really than to put them in a raised bed problem is can you get them through a zero degree Fahrenheit winter and that's going to be the question um, because the roots will survive I mean the the wood may survive zero degrees Fahrenheit but the roots will only survive 20 degrees Fahrenheit so if the roots are getting damaged it's not good now the lower you go in the raised bed I mean obviously that's better because the native soil is going to be warmer it's going to be about 32 at least so you know, this top couple inches here may freeze, but is it gonna be 20? I don't know. So I think what I'm trying to get at is here is that this bed is kind of a huge waste of time. And if I can put a bunch of fig trees in here and make it worth it, I think that is my best bet because what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to come in here and I'm gonna have to amend this entire thing. I'm gonna take out a lot of the soil a lot of the peat moss really break up the roots that these shade trees have put in here. And it's gonna be a lot of work. I just spent probably 30 minutes trying to dig through this little section here and do exactly just that. And it seemed to work, but um, yeah, I just think this is a more inferior way of growing things. And uh, especially annuals that require so much energy, require, you know so much more food um you know even more sunlight it's just not a great place and the way that i did it is just inferior and i wish that uh you guys can learn from this mistake because it's really i think the the lesson learned here is that it's better to um not do something wrong to start because in the end you're just gonna you're just gonna end up having to fix it a million times move things around a million times so do things right from the start i think is really 
the point of this video in terms of bed prep. Start out with the right soil. Start out with the right materials. I mean, it is really going to make a huge difference in your success. So that is the video and that is my advice. Um, hopefully you guys got to this point in the video because it was a long process to get to that lesson. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I appreciate you guys. There's plenty of you guys that are still watching right now. Um, and you guys are the, the true fans. So, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, I'll talk to you all later. Take care.